Hi, this is Sieg Schmalz, Applications Engineer at Microchip Technology. In previous videos, I described time interval errors, or TIE, of a real clock as the sum of different phase amplitudes, each of which is occurring at a different frequency. To demonstrate jitter, I am going to animate real clock edges, shown in blue, occurring at slight offsets from the ideal clock rising edge, shown in red. One at a time, I am adding these real edges that occur at different frequencies. For a review of this concept, please see video number 12 in this series, which is entitled Time Interval Error. Now, let's think about what these rising edges of the non-ideal clocks look like when we add them all together. We see edges appearing all over the place. Sometimes here, sometimes here, sometimes here. So, I am going to speed up the animation now. When viewed from the reference point of the ideal clock rising edge, shown in red, the edges of the real clock appear to be moving back and forth very quickly. They are jittering back and forth. Think about it. If I have, say, a very shaky hand, we would say my hand is jittery because my hand is quickly moving back and forth close to the ideal position where I'm trying to hold it. Hmm. Maybe this is why we call this tie jitter. On an oscilloscope, we can view tie jitter by triggering off of a very clean clock, such as the output of a crystal oscillator. We can then measure a clock of the same frequency that is the output of a system that uses this clean clock as an input. In this example, then, the ideal clock is approximated as the input to the system, and the real clock is the output of the system. We can see the real clock edge in blue is jittering around the ideal clock edge in yellow. If we turn on infinite persistence, we can see the approximate range of the jitter. There is actually a way to calculate the RMS value of this range of jitter based on the phase noise plot of the clock, which we will discuss in the next video. But one thing to keep in mind is that tie jitter is also known as phase jitter and is often simply referred to as jitter in data sheets. This can be a little confusing, as there are other types of jitter that I will be discussing in future videos. But for now, our focus will be on measuring and calculating this tie jitter, or phase jitter, which I have already mentioned is the topic of our next video.